Hello friends, we are back with uh, reaction dynamics uh, and uh, we are almost uh, towards the end of uh, this uh, rate processes. So, uh, last lecture in our last lecture we discussed uh, this uh, discussed how to I mean how to find out the population of various states. So, uh, we discussed uh, infrared chemiluminescence, so, infrared chemiluminescence and we have taken the example of uh, I mean uh, gas phase reaction that is uh, you know uh, uh, like uh, diatomic uh, halogen okay, H plus C L 2 giving rise to H C L. So, it is B prime J prime plus C L. Okay, so, this one this guy is vibrationally and rotationally excited. Okay. So, and uh, what is happening that uh, this emits in the infrared region and uh, if we monitor this infrared uh, emission spectra, infrared emission spectra as a function of wavelength, then we should be able to find out information uh, uh, of this uh, on the on the uh, about the population of these various these levels, this V prime and J prime levels, but the only problem is that uh, we do not have any idea on uh, this uh, on the population of uh, ground state. <coughs> what is the population pattern in the ground state? Whether lowest uh, V level is more populated or intermediate or, uh, or uh, lowest vibration or intermediate vibrational levels. I mean exactly it is not possible to to find out that because everything we are getting I mean whatever information it is from the excited state vibrationally and uh, rotationally excited state. Okay, but it is it is a good good method <coughs> good technique in uh, proving this uh, population of various J and uh, V levels. <coughs> Okay, but it is although it is uh, selective like for HCl or maybe for HF you can apply this. That means, your species should have uh, capability of emitting <coughs> in the in the optical spectroscopic uh, region may be visible may be IR, okay, but here we, we talked about this IR chemiluminescence. Next is and another method is called the laser induced fluorescence. Laser induced fluorescence. Laser induced fluorescence L I F. Okay. So thing is that <coughs> if you have a species which when excited by specific laser frequency then it goes to the excited state and then from the excited state you can you can uh, get fluorescence. So, this fluorescence is induced by lasers that is why it is called the laser induced fluorescence. And the species like you know uh, that species may be your uh, like fragments I mean like OH maybe something else it is not like you know uh, like a stable chemical species that has to be there, but uh, maybe <coughs> other species of this sort may be may be useful that uh, it will it will give you laser induced fluorescence. Okay. So, by uh, monitoring by monitoring you know uh, the fluorescence which is which we are getting we can get uh, 
lot of information on the on the population of uh, various levels okay so what is the basic principle uh, for this laser induced uh, fluorescence so thing is that since we we are doing excitation laser induced means first you have to do laser excitation and uh, followed by you know looking into your uh, emission so vr it is the potential energy function as a function of r so this is the lower potential energy surface and see this is your upper potential energy surface okay i have rather potential energy diagram not the surface because it is a intersection i mean and a cross section of a three dimensional or multi dimensional potential energy surface so these are the various uh, vibrational levels vibrational ladders okay this is your uh, uh, excited electronic state this is your maybe lower electronic state that is maybe uh, this is not not the excited one but it is the lower lower line low line uh maybe ground state uh low lying electronic state so what do you do you excite with laser and uh, depending on the frequency of your laser maybe it will reach over here maybe it will reach somewhere over here also maybe it will originate from here go to here this way so uh, depending on your excitation frequency excitation energy you know this gap means when this gap matches with the initial and final then transition will take place and uh, if the population of uh, this state say is more than the other one or maybe this one is more populated say this one is more populated compared to other then the absorption cross section will be more therefore corresponding you know uh, correspondingly upper state population will be more so intensity of your emitted intensity of your emitted light will be more okay so basically uh, we observe this uh, means if we do this one then do this excitation then possibility is that maybe one or more level uh, gets uh, involved so in that case you may observe uh, unresolved uh, uh, you know um, emission okay so in one case like if you excite this way then all possible levels are excited but the thing is that when they will emit okay their emission uh, they will emit at a particular frequency so from that emission frequency you will be able to get the idea of the of the status of the initial population okay so this is laser induced fluorescence but uh, the point is that maybe you can monitor the total fluorescence like like uh, you can do another way that is uh, you keep your excitation beam excitation beam fixed at a wavelength and you monitor the total uh, fluorescence okay uh, that you can do so in that way what you do you this is your this is your excitation beam so you keep on changing this excitation beam frequency okay and you monitor uh, you monitor the uh, the uh, the total emitted uh, light so this way also you should you would be able to know about uh, the population uh, uh, population 
information and using the standard formula you should be able to gain information on on what is exactly going on i mean what is exactly there in this uh, i mean with respect to the population of various labels okay so that means you excite different quantum states to an upper electronic state by varying lambda i mean this uh, this one and find out the i mean you know collect the total fluorescence and this is like the absorbance spectra okay uh, but in case of absorption you know it is not that sensitive but it has this this laser induced fluorescence that is lif has the higher uh, sensitivity okay so um, <coughs> So that is, that is uh, you know, uh, you know, in one respect, it is, it is uh, advantageous. Okay, so uh, that is uh, laser-based absorption methods, and you know, nowadays this laser-based absorption methods, um, you know, uh, are also developed. Okay, which are also you know very much sensitive. Unlike simple absorbance spectroscopy, it is not that sensitive. Okay. But fluorescence, since fluorescence is a very sensitive one, you know, depending on the fluorescence quantum yield of the substance or the quantum yield of the species that you are looking at. So, uh, you may get huge fluorescence or you may get a little less fluorescence. So, all these, uh, you know, are to be considered while, while uh, you know, um, while uh, using this uh, LIF technique. Okay. Uh, like let us take one example that is uh, reaction of uh, H uh, I with barium. Okay. So, B A plus H I giving rise to B A I in some y at some vibrational level V prime plus H. Okay. So, here this B A and this H I, these are you know these are in the in the in the, in the form of molecular beam. So, molecular beam okay. uh, and using this uh, L I F technique okay, laser induced fluorescence technique. Uh, we can, since it is a very sensitive technique, we can detect detect uh, these products like BAI or maybe some other. Okay, so typical uh, you know spectra that we may be getting for uh, BAI, it is uh, just like something like this. So that will give you. Uh, that is your lambda and this is your intensity. So, that will give you the idea of uh, you know fluorescence intensity and from that you can gain information like this one is most intense, okay, this one is lesser and there is you see there is a progression that means there is a gap you know you see. So, these are typical you know gap corresponding to various levels. So, we can get in gain information of the of the levels uh, present over there. Okay. Only thing is that only requirement what is the basic requirement that since you are you are probing into you know this is your lower uh, level and this is your upper level. So, this should for us I mean radiative uh, uh, radiative de excitation should take place from here to here so that you get emission. This should be radiative. Okay. So, if there is no radiative emission, then um, you know this method will not be successful. So, so why do we need to uh, need to gain information on the population of various levels? Okay. That will give you the idea of the levels i mean i mean uh, 
the inner levels inner levels means electronic associated vibration and, and rotational levels and their population how these levels are populated okay so that will help in gaining you know information on the on the on the potential energy uh, diagram for the species concerned okay and that potential energy di diagram is very important in in uh, in uh, determining uh, you know the nature of uh, the process okay so that's why uh, people were interested uh, in finding out this uh, population of various levels like one method i uh, talked uh, on um, this chemical luminescence infrared chemical luminescence like that this is another method which is your laser induced fluorescence method okay another th important point is that many excited electronic state okay so uh, excited electronic state may means if the species uh, you know gets excited to an excited electronic level then maybe you know photo dissociation result okay so when photo dissociation occurs then uh, like uh, suppose uh, this is your excited uh, uh, excited level say there is another level which is a dissociated level suppose you are you excite your sample over here or maybe you excite over here and then uh, you know vibrational relaxation uh, the system gets transferred to here where there is a there is a curved crossing so what happens that the system gets transferred from here to here leading to dissociation like i i discussed uh, this uh, femtochemistry sodium iodide decomposition okay there is a you know uh, you know uh, curved crossing one is dissociative another is attractive potential in the surface so what happens the system gets transferred from the bound state to an unbound state and then it dissociates and of course in the time scale of emission that is the emission re, uh, uh, emission uh, i mean time record for the emission to to occur i mean uh, in the uh, within the lifetime of the of the excited state okay uh, within the lifetime of the excited state means suppose you your excited ensemble is here okay it say this is your excited state and uh, lifetime is basically the time required for the excited ensemble to 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 decay to one eighth okay one eighth of its uh, initial population one eighth means e e is uh, like uh, close to one third i mean uh, uh, it is basically one eighth means one third okay like log base e that e i am talking about so uh, that means <coughs> the time required to go to one eighth of its initial population that is the time is called the it is called your lifetime so within the lifetime of uh, the excited state if this state dissociates that is like uh, you have like such a curve crossing then <coughs> it's a problem you won't get uh, any uh, fluorescence okay fluorescence uh, quantum yield is uh, rapidly uh, you know i mean it is largely reduced okay so your uh, <coughs> fluorescence will be less therefore therefore you may not be able to able to uh, <coughs> detect the fluorescence so these are the problems i mean associated problems one may uh, encounter while uh, you know doing this uh, laser induced fluorescence otherwise otherwise this laser induced fluorescence is a very you know very sensitive technique and of course this laser induced fluorescence i mean this uh, um, this part of the apparatus i mean you can attach such an arrangement with you know molecular beam arrangement okay that uh, where the reaction is taking place place that reaction uh, you know where this beams are you know interacting i mean crossing so there actually you shine with a laser and uh, and of course you change the frequency because you scan the frequency and collect the total fluorescence maybe okay so you scan the frequency and collect the uh, collect the you know emission okay and then record that will give you uh, the idea of uh, you know this uh, population okay so this is uh, one technique another uh, 
technique could be a uh, ionization method. Ionization methods. Okay, so resonant enhanced. Uh, I mean, resonantly enhanced. It is called the resonant enhanced. Enhanced multi photon ionization. Okay, it is called REMPI R E M P I REMPI. Okay, excite uh, what do you do? You excite to an upper electronic state. So, you have got the ground state. Okay. Say you have your say pre dissociation state, pre dissociation means before, I mean here. Okay. Your true dissociation limit may be somewhere over here, here and above. It is called your true dissociation limit. But before you reach true dissociation, if a curve crossing of this shot is there, then maybe you get pre dissociation. So, so you know you do not get since the product gets dissociated, so you do not get any emission. Okay, so, so characteristic spectra vanishes as uh, pre dissociation occurs. So, say it is your pre dissociative state. So, pre dissociation ok ok. So, this is your ground state this is the pre dissociation state. So, maybe uh, say uh, a b say this is a b star and uh, another state uh, from pre dissociation to another ok. So, it is basically two photons or multiple photons are required at least two photons or multiple photons are required multi photon ionization. Okay. So, basically uh, uh, this one is pre dissociative state and if you from this pre dissociation if you add another photon then you go to a B say plus plus electron. Okay. So, uh, basically it is an ionized state. Okay. So, this is your ionization limit. So, beyond this if you can cross or at least if you can reach you will get ionized ionized uh, uh, products. Okay. So, in this case what you need since you require a multi photon ionization I mean a multi photon process then you need to have a high photon density. So, high photon density means your uh, I mean uh, bi photonic process or maybe multi photonic process will be enhanced that is the that is if your field strength I mean laser electric field is very high then the nonlinear processes will take place and uh, your multiple I mean uh, multi photon absorption followed by ionization will take place. Okay. So, in this case you have to use uh, intense laser pulse, okay. intense laser pulse and, uh, and uh, so you need intense, intense lasers laser pulse okay. and, uh, and of course, uh, and um, so that means, this intense laser pulse will provide, provide the photon which uh, may be, uh, which may be uh, you know uh, 
which may be uh, giving you to the giving you to this uh, ionized state maybe in some cases it 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 may not be a single <coughs> i mean this predisposition step i mean the level is such a height that maybe one photon will uh, may not be sufficient so you may need two photons over here <coughs> two photons are required to i mean it's a biphotonic absorption to predisposition and when the predisposition uh, state is reached then the because of your intense laser pulse third photon. So, this is first photon, this is your second and this is the third photon is used uh, to put the uh, put the system to your uh, to the <coughs> ionized state. Okay. <coughs> and the thing is that uh, uh, <coughs> since ions are generated because of this ionization uh, because of this multi photonic uh, absorption process. So, intense laser pulse may be third photon, third photon will put, will put to the ionized state. Okay. Ionized state before dissociation takes place. Okay before dissociation dissociation takes place okay and the thing is that since ions are generated from this you get, you get ions so you can detect ions and um, ions are easy to detect and it's a very efficient uh, and sensitive techniques. So, ions so easy to detect to detect easy to detect and uh, it is a uh, sensitive sensitive to ok. So, uh, this way I mean uh, this uh, using resonantly enhanced multi photon ionization you can uh, you can also you know find out it, it is a way it is another another way ok. Mm. And now next is uh, quantum state populations can be measured from you know transition intensities ok. So, different quantum state populations you know you can you can uh, find out using you know uh, intensity of the transition i mean the, the the level which is more populated will will have you know higher intensity of transition compared to the one which is of lower uh, population okay another thing is you know uh, velocities i mean when when you know when you are plotting the velocity contour then velocities can also be proved by doppler broadening uh, of the spectral lines because uh, if there is a relative motion between your detector and your ion so the so the observed uh, frequency is different compared to the actual frequency like like when uh, you hear the whistle of a train okay uh, which is uh, coming to you and uh, maybe which is going away from you okay suppose that you are moving you, you are riding a you know you know bicycle and one train is coming to you in in one case and in another case say it is going away from you so in both cases what is happening that because of this uh, relative motion of these two uh, between these two you know you you see you, you experience a difference you know a different frequency so that is called your doppler shifting so what happens that you know velocities can be measured by observing the doppler broadening of the spectral lines okay so maybe doppler see uh, looking into the doppler broadening broadening of uh, spectral lines
we can also look into this uh, velocities. Okay, and uh, so these are uh, this is another thing, and maybe maybe like that, or maybe uh, velocities you can find out by time of flight mass spectrometry. That is time required to fly from one one say point to another. Okay, and that will depend on the mass as well. Okay, uh, so. So, uh, that these, these are the things that uh, one may be using. Another is another method is your Rydberg tagging. Rydberg tagging. Now, what is this Rydberg state? Now, Rydberg state is basically uh, Rydberg state is basically uh, a state that is state of an atom okay? uh, and these are electronically excited. So, so, Rydberg state is a state of an atom which is electronically excited okay? with energies following the Rydberg's formula. Okay, and and also uh, uh, and they will and uh, Rydberg formula as they converge on an ionic state with an ionization energy means when you provide ionization energy, it will it will converge uh, uh, to an ionic state. So it's a it's a basically you know it's a high highly excited state. Okay, so you know. Rydberg state is basically very close to close to the ionization state, but uh, uh, but maybe if you if you you know uh, give the ionization energy, then it will easily you know converge to an ionic state. Okay. So these are these are very close, not not much far. Okay. So this diagram is basically like you have got your ground state. Okay. Then pre dissociative state. pre dissociation stage okay then you have got your rydberg state rydberg state and then is your ionization limit maybe so this is your ionization limit okay ionization limit. Okay. <coughs> so, what you do? By maybe by photonic absorption of course, with intense laser. This is your E b star, this is your E b ground state, then your E b double star highly excited another photon. Okay. So, it is ex electronically excited state with energies following the Rydberg's formula as uh, they converge to an ionic state with an ionization energy. Okay. So, so they will you know they, they will be very close to an ionization limit. Okay. So, it is a variant of resonance resonantly enhanced uh, multiphoton ionization in which the species in the uh, species of interest is excited to a very high lying Rydberg state. Okay. So, very high lying means they are very close to ionization okay. and it is it is it is uh, you know lying very close to you know sufficiently close to the ionization limit. Okay. And if you you know under this condition means if you do a Rydberg tagging then if you can have a uh, you know sufficiently sufficiently you know it is Rydberg state which is sufficiently close to the ionization limit then with the help of a very little uh, electric field if you apply a uh, very weak electric field then what will happen that this uh, 
high lying this Rydberg state will 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 lose an electron okay or maybe it will just simply ionize with the help of electric uh, you know you know weak electric field so that's why in you know Rydberg state uh, is a state of an uh, I mean an a state of an atom which is electronically electronically excited state and generally highly excited state uh, with energies and that is you know that follows the Rydberg's formula and uh, they converge to an ionic state okay i mean they will ultimately con, uh, converge to an ionic state with with uh, some by supplying a little amount of uh, uh, ionization energy so that's why uh, uh, small electric field small electric field will be you know uh, sufficient electric field will be sufficient to to uh, do the do the thing okay so to to ionize it so it is another form of uh, ionization method although uh, resonance uh, enhanced uh, multi resonantly enhanced multi photon ionization so it directly you know um, uh, transfers the pre dissociative state to the to the ionization limit but here what is uh, what is done is you know uh, it goes via the rydberg state i mean i mean high lying rydberg state okay so it ha it will have a high velocity resolution okay unlike your uh, your resonance resonantly enhanced multi photon ionization because uh, there is no coulomb repulsion between the excited uh, neutral species that is created with the help uh, you know uh, i mean uh, with the help of laser of course in this case uh, uh, laser has to be focused uh, very tightly so, laser should be should have tight focusing. Tight focusing. Tight focusing means you know photon density is very high. Photon density is very high means your uh, uh, photon density high means uh, po possibility. I mean probability of transition to a Rydberg state is more. Okay. So, uh, so it is it is uh, advantageous compared to compared to REMP REMPI because it will have high velocity resolution because there is no Coulomb repulsion between excited neutral species that is created in the in the laser pulse. I mean laser focus. Okay. Next is uh, ion imaging. Ion imaging is another. Uh, another method okay so uh, this provides a direct picture of the velocity distribution okay say you have got uh, you have say a plus say um, b2 a giving rise to ab okay b prime j prime plus b okay so, you can have a direct picture of the velocity distribution. Of the distribution, velocity distribution. So, a basic uh, diagram is you have got. Uh, a flight tube okay then you have got uh, imaging uh, detector somewhere over here okay and then you have got your signal over here which goes into a charge coupled device ccd ccd camera CCD camera, CCD camera, and uh, this is your imaging uh, detector. This is your flight tube. Okay, and uh, you have got your ion optics. I mean. 
ion optics means uh, up to you know focus or defocus your ions you need to have some some electrical arrangement which is called the you know which is called ion lens or ion uh, something like that ion mirror like that so this is your ion optics and you have your uh, laser used to probe okay laser for probing and and here you you send your you know molecular beam this is your molecular beam okay so in this case you can have your uh, velocity distribution pattern because it will this uh, ions will move this way okay ions will move this way it will enter and then it will move this way it will fly it will it will fly from here to here and then you can uh, image it so that's a typical you know um, the typical uh, description for uh, i mean uh, schematic of a of an ion imaging uh, uh, apparatus so ion imaging okay uh, next is another uh, important uh, method uh, which i might have already talked about in solution phase uh, cases which is called the called the pump probe technique okay and uh, this is maybe this may be regarded as uh, alternative to molecular beam approaches okay and this is very useful for determining the the population so useful for useful for for determining determining rho vibrational rotation rot that is rho vibrational vibrational quantum i mean rho vibrational populations so that is the population of the I mean, this is very useful, okay. And of course, uh, of course, uh, uh, the for the nascent states. So useful for determining the rho vibrational population. So that means uh, various uh, rotational and vibrational quantum states. I mean, population of those quantum states. So to do that, pump probe technique is uh, is uh, one of the widely used uh, used uh, techniques okay so what do you do like a, as an example say you have got ozone o3 okay you shine with light uh, photon okay so photo dissociation leads to o plus o2 Okay, so this is your pump. Okay, and this O, nascent O. Okay, in maybe in one D state. So this uh, um, this state, I mean description, whether it is one D or one P or or three uh, P, whatever. So this. Um, uh, this term, term atomic terminology I have not uh, talked about. So, uh, you can consult any standard uh, textbook uh, like a textbook on uh, quantum chemistry by one by maybe 
Levine, maybe by uh, Iring Walter Kimball, or maybe any standard uh, quantum chemistry textbook where this particular thing is a term symbol that is molecular and atomic term symbols are discussed. So, uh, actually uh, this is beyond the scope of this current uh, current lecture. So, so, anyway, so this is in a 1 D state. So, when this 1 D, I mean O in 1 D reacts with uh, CH4 giving rise to OH V prime J primed plus CH3. So, this is called a probe. Okay. This is called a probe. So, this basically this is this photon is your I mean H nu is your pump and this CH 4 is your probe. Okay. And then what you do as I already told you that laser induced fluorescence is a is a very sensitive technique. So, using laser induced fluorescence you can you can probe this uh, which v prime j prime. So, then you employ this for the laser induced fluorescence method. Okay. So, from laser induced fluorescence you can also have the information of the various uh, v's and j states. Okay. And uh, and uh, for this one, I mean to probe this, for this to probe this which you have to, I mean uh, for this particular state you have to use another laser to probe this one. Okay. So, uh, basically to generate the species for probing you have to use this O plus CH4 reaction to this to do uh, to do to generate this which. Okay. So, pulse laser of the order of so pulsed laser may be typical N D YAG laser. Which, uh, which has the pulse width of the order of uh, nanosecond of the order of say 5 to 10 nanosecond okay, uh, is used for both pump and probe used for both for both pump and probe measurements okay and uh, and also in this case to avoid uh, avoid you know collisional energy transfer in OH. So, to avoid collisional energy transfer transfer because of any you know if it is in under high pressure then there will be uh, there could be problem. So, that is why low pressure is used low pressure low pressure and uh, short of course uh, short pump to probe pulse delay uh, delay is used that means, uh, you, you first excite you first, first do this reaction. So, this is your pump and then the uh, then <coughs> there is CH 4. So, which reacts with this to produce this the moment it is generated you should have another pulse to probe into because, because if you allow more time there is more possibility of collision. So, more possibility of collision means uh, you know collisional deactivation or maybe collisional energy transfer will lead to lead to you know uh, lead to you know scrambling. So, so to avoid that you should you should do the you know should have your pump probe delay 
uh, less short palm probe delay ok. And uh, so, uh, this is uh, important because uh, to know the population of these, uh, this uh, studies are important to know the population of the you know uh, energetically accessible uh, rotation vibrational levels ok. So, that is why palm, palm probe uh, technique, palm probe technique is a is a uh, you know is a very significant uh, technique ok. As for example, uh, insertion reaction you know in initially it forms highly rho vibrationally excited uh, CH3OH which lives for a very uh, you know short time ok a few picosecond ok. So, that is why you know uh, that is what is required that you should you should have your uh, probe pulse you know that should come I mean that should should be should be should be present over there I mean your uh, in the in the reaction mixture I mean uh, very you know close to your pump because the problem is if you allow more time then uh, you are in trouble that like here I mean I just give an example that for uh, certain insertion reaction you know uh, like uh, when you do when you get like for rho vibrational CH3 which excited CH3 which excited which has got lifetime ok you know of the order of picosecond 10 to the power minus 12 second. So, then it is a problem. So, that means in that case the moment your pump is there the probe should be should also be present I mean very close to that otherwise you, you may miss it. Okay, so, that is uh, you know it is the just the giving you the uh, basic idea of palm probe method in in this uh, in this uh, molecular beam uh, you know or maybe in gas phase reaction palm probe technique. So, uh, so what we have uh, you know learnt in this uh, particular piece of uh, lecture that uh, we have talked about this laser induced fluorescence which is a very sensitive technique ok unlike this absorbance technique it is a very sensitive technique ok. Only thing is that the you know uh, the upper electronic state should have you know fluorescence that is the that is the important point ok. So, and uh, you should get uh, information on the on the population of the various V levels v v vibrational levels. We have we have talked about this ionization methods like uh, resonantly enhanced multi photon ionization REMP. So, that is based on the ionization technique because ions are easy to detect ok and uh, and a slight variation of uh, that one is uh, you know Rempe's slight variation is the Rydberg tagging tagging Rydberg tagging. So, uh, you know uh, that is uh, another another you know a small variation of Rempe that can also be used uh, uh, use because in that case only thing is that you use multi photon ionization and uh, so that you generate a highly excited uh, atom and with the help of a very weak electric field you ionize it. So, in this case it, it, it has a good uh, you know velocity resolution velocity resolution ok. Another is your uh, technique is your ion imaging that is uh, also used to uh, you know have a have a picture on the picture of your velocity distribution. Last we talked about this uh, palm probe technique which is an alternative to your beam measurements molecular beam methods ok which is uh, which is also very useful you know um, to look into the uh, population of the various you know vibrational and rotational state like rho vibrationally excited levels. So, that is all uh, for today uh, 
and uh, we will uh, we will uh, talk you know in our next uh, lecture we will talk on this uh, we will come uh, on I mean we will discuss this potential energy surface in the next lecture. So, uh, till then thank you.